My name is Fred Jordan, and I am the president of the San Francisco African American Chamber of Commerce. And we are very, very interested in the gentrification here in San Francisco, and also specifically in the Fillmore District. Uh, I am uh, a civil engineer. I came to San Francisco in the late 60s, early 70s, right out of school, graduate school in Boston. And this was a wonderful place. I know that with a couple of small children on Saturday, I would uh, leave the house about 4 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon and go to the Fillmore District to listen to jazz. And I would go up and down the Fillmore, maybe uh, four or five different clubs and just sit in on the sessions and listen to jazz and that was my world and this was around 73 72 73 and uh, and that's all I needed was to go listen to jazz up and down Fillmore now let me tell you I had quite a choice because at one time the Fillmore district just that little strip between uh, Eddy and between uh, California Street had 29 jazz clubs, jazz and supper clubs, in that little short six or seven blocks. Uh, it was a jazz mecca. And every great jazz player had an album on the Fillmore. Uh, whether it was Miles Davis or, or, or um, uh, Dizzy Gillespie uh, or John or, or any, any of the, the great musicians had an uh, album that was made on the Fillmore, and that was my heaven. Now, abruptly, in 1973, the San Francisco African American, I mean the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency decided that that was the ghetto. And they decided that what they needed to do was to redevelop that district or that area, which they did not understand, that was similar to Harlem. It was called the Harlem of the West. It, uh, Harlem was the only competition to San Francisco at that time. And so the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency decided they would just mow down that neighborhood and replace it with sleek condominiums and apartments and, and stores. That was the first great gentrification of African Americans in San Francisco. It was an absolute disaster. For 20 years, those properties or that land that laid empty, the lots were empty up and down that street there and it was one of the most viable communities in America. For 20 years, the blocks along Fillmore, Eddy to uh, Gary and whatever laid empty, big rats ran across the street and, and the redevelopment agency activity pushed 50,000 African Americans out of San Francisco, just like that. 50,000. Now I'm an engineer. I can't spell too well, but I sure can count. And that was my calculation that uh, well, how many people were pushed out. So today the gentrification continues. And we have um, um, just thousands and thousands of people pushed out. We've gone from 18%, not 14%, 18% of the population of the city and county of San Francisco down to about five, about five point something, maybe even lower, but down to about 5%. And now the politicians could care less about us because when I say us, I'm talking about the black population because we have no numbers. We've been pushed, spread in the wind. And no one knows where all of the African Americans who've come out of this city, they don't know where they've gone. Maybe Antioch, 
used to be East Palo Alto, but now East Palo Alto is just as expensive as any other place in the Bay Area. And, uh, but wherever, many people just took the midnight train back to Georgia. And uh, I just haven't seen too many people come back from Georgia, but many went back to the South, to Texas, to New Orleans, and whatever after being uh, gentrified right here in the city and county of San Francisco.